Yeah, Eric. Very good to teach Dharma today. Today is uh, Lava Tujin. Also Halloween, impermanent day, remember. And also kindness of a mother, try to remember, yeah? Please teach. Thank you, Thank you very much. So, I'm going to um, teach on something, partly because of something John said about keeping things real. And uh, something happened for me today that sparked a really powerful teaching, so I thought I would change my plans a little bit and uh, talk about uh, what happened for me. Um, so, real briefly, Gepo was on the throne teaching, and uh, he was giving a teaching that was actually very, very important for me. Uh, he was talking about a particular quality of meditation that I'm very interested in and need to understand better. And still, in that moment, I saw something and I thought, oh, I should dink around and fix that. I was, I was dinking around with my notes, basically, and kind of dividing my attention between the teaching and, and making my notes pretty. And uh, actually, this will make more sense if I back up. Something happened before this that makes this even weirder. About 15 minutes before this happened, Kempo was teaching on the three lacinesses and the three diligences, and he actually asked me to illustrate one of the combinations, um, the setting wrong priorities and uh, insatiable diligence, right? And, and I fairly accurately said, well, you know, if you have wrong priorities, you aren't making Dharma your top priority, and the antidote for that is to be insatiably diligent, like really focus on that Dharma. So now here he is teaching like this very key important thing about meditation that I know I really want. Like I know this is really valuable to me. And I kind of went shrunk and like off to the side. I'm like, I went, now I swear to you this is the truth because this really happened. While I'm doing this, I'm noticing what I'm doing and I'm thinking, this is really stupid. You know, like you should be really focused on these incredible teachings, like this, your teacher's giving you this pith instruction, right? And just as I think that, Keppel looks right at stuff. he looks at me he's like, Eric, what are you doing? And like that, it was like, whoa, okay, I totally blew it. I, I blew it. I had this opportunity to receive this teaching, and I didn't seize it. I didn't hold it carefully. And so, afterwards, I was, I've been contemplating about this this afternoon a little bit and really thinking about what I had done and and a, a couple of important pieces came together for me in sort of like, yeah, I know this, but no, I mean like really I sort of felt it. It was like, I want to become Buddha and I want to become Buddha because I really understand and I, and I trust and I believe that it is the most powerful way that I can benefit those around me. Um, I see a lot of suffering, and I have seen a lot of suffering. And I know now what causes suffering, I know what the solution is, and I know that it starts with me. Uh, for me, the most profound thing I can do to benefit you is fix my thinking. So, here I am, you know, like Mother's Day, Buddha's is like super auspicious day, really important, and I go trundling down the garden path. I, I, I don't do what I know needs to be done. And it got me thinking about why, you know, why am I doing this? Like, why am I, why am I going the wrong direction? You know, like, what, how, do, and how do I break that habitual tendency to do what I know isn't right to do, right? And it occurred to me as I was, I, I did a bunch of prostrations to kind of purify this, and I, and I was doing prostrations, and I thought, wow, you know who doesn't like diligence? Like, you know who, like, the one place you can go where, the, like, there's one spot that won't like diligence? It, it's, really, it's really obvious, but I didn't really see it until today. The only thing that doesn't like diligence in me is my own ego clinging. The opposite of diligence is ego clinging. And the opposite of ego clinging is diligence. So the more I can figure out how to break through 
my habitual ego clinging tendencies, my own habitual tendency to want to be, you know, self-deprecating. I can't learn that dharma or I can't remember that dharma. You know, that's just how I am. I have a hard time memorizing things. That's ego clinging talking. Right? I mean, the only reason why I have a hard time memorizing a list of dharma is because I have a habitual tendency of not memorizing dharma. I've created that pattern. I made that characteristic in me. Therefore, it's hard to learn dharma now. It's hard to hold dharma. So I know that. I know how dharma works. I know how karma works. I can break that habitual tendency and create a new one. I can create the habitual tendency of holding dharma. Exactly the way I created the habitual tendency of not being able to hold dharma. Right? So, confident diligence. Yes, I confidently can do this. I just have to put the time and effort into it. Right? Okay, so... Procrastination, this is another form of laziness, of the three lazinesses, procrastination. Again, who's procrastinating? I just want to hang, man. I just want like a day off. Can't I just rest for a little while? The only one who ever procrastinates. I mean, if you really think about procrastination, like if you kind of look at it naked for who it really is, what it's saying is I don't really care that you're suffering. I don't really care that other people are, you know, experiencing a lot of pain and suffering. If I care, if I really think about others, if I really focus on other beings, I really, like, habitually, naturally, primordially, want them to not suffer. You know? So, here I am, like, coming at this with my ego clinging, saying, yeah, yeah, suffering, whatever. I just want to, like, take a nap. <laughs> so, if I can figure out how to, like, find that, I be that, like, okay, that's got to stop. I have to, you know, break that habit. Again, I created that habit. And if I really look at that habit and I think about it, it's like, wait a minute. The nap is not going to make me happy. That laziness is actually my negative thinking, right? Therefore, it infallibly has to cause suffering. There's no way that my negative thinking can lead to my happiness. So, the antidote for procrastination is joyful diligence. I joyfully practice Dharma because it's the cause of my happiness and it's the condition for all beings' happiness. Like, wow, this helps all my mother sentient beings. This is totally good. Right? So the third form of laziness is wrong priority. Like, you're in this profound teaching. <laughs> you're getting this really important pith instruction on how to meditate. And you want to dress up your notes a little bit or check YouTube or your email or whatever, right? Again, the only one who's going to do that is the one who isn't paying attention to all beings. Isn't paying attention to, wow, what will help me best? What will help everybody best? Ah, okay, yes, I do remember. Insatiable diligence. So, anyway. Um, it's funny to me I, <laughs> that from Ego Clinging's point of view, Diligence actually sounds like a drag. I mean, it's like a burden sounding. You know, if, if you just hand diligence over to Ego Clean and say, here, take this, it's going to be like, oh man, I don't want to do that. That's a really good sign. That actually should be like, um, how do you say that? I don't know, there's got to be a right word for that. That quality of, I don't like that, is the opposite of your own ego clinging, right? You should perk up when that happens. You should look at that and say, okay, who doesn't like this? Because you're very close to catching the problem, right then. I don't know if this makes any sense. There's, like I said, there's got to be a good word for this. I don't... It, it, it's more like, it's like, um, it definitely contradicts, but it's like a signpost, you know? It's like you've caught a glimpse of something you need to see, you know? Anyway, so, I don't know if this is of any value to any of the rest of you. It was a very powerful thing for me. Oh, there was one other thing here, too, that was important. Several different people kind of gave me this, oh, kind of sorry, dude, look. 
Don't do that. I, I invite you to not do that. Here's why. We have very few opportunities in this life where we have somebody who will work with us to break out of our habitual ego clinging. So, for me, the minute Kepo said, what are you doing? Like, right away, I thought about defending myself. Like, I thought about, you know, I could spin this a little bit or something and you know, kind of get out of this. And I thought, no, I was totally doing this wrong. If he doesn't catch me, who's going to? Right? I'm not going to. Because what i got to work with right now is ego-clinging thinking, and ego-clinging thinking is going to defend itself. So, just as a little aside, kind of note about the preciousness of having Sangha and having a teacher, having people who will really support you to go after this problem, your habitual ego-clinging, and the negative thinking that arises from it. To have somebody who will pin you down directly and say, that's a problem, you need to fix that right there, that's something to rejoice in. So, anyway, just as, like I said, it's a little bit of an aside sort of piece there. Thank you for your sympathy, but I would invite you to rejoice, because it's way more powerful. So, thank you very much, Kempo. Mm -hmm. Really, thank you very much. Yeah. And uh, thank all of you, and I rejoice in your Dharma teaching. So. so, in the future, I will find out, if I find somebody mistake, I try to find out. <laughs> 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 So. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, one thing is, uh, today is like, whatever you do is like almost 10 million times. So, <coughs> you, any good choose things you do, you know, 10 million times. Also, yeah. you do like, uh, <laughs> non good choose things, also 10 million times. And this is, uh, they said in the full moon, the new moon, like those gods and the non-gods, they're fighting each other, like huge match. So like very good to not have a negative thinking or negative conduct, that they have more virtuous thinking, virtuous conduct. And also this uh, eight to uh, day also very good to do. But actually, this time like uh, many disease, many starvations, many wars, like they happen this one. You do little good things also very powerful, they said, Buddha. For example, you have a candle. In the daytime, you put the candle. doesn't make any difference. Right. But a dark area of little candle make big difference. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Same things. <coughs> like a very difficult challenge place, you practice a little bit. Also very powerful. Also same things, for example, somebody really poor or like a fool but it's very full, stomach is very full, you give food, not much different, but they're really hungry, you give a little food also make big difference. Same thing, you are very happy, successful, and you, do you need anything? Do you need anything? <coughs> or you're really sad or suffering, do you need anything? Just mm. different time. Same time as like uh, the wind is very big, then the candle is not blow up, it's much better than no wind, no blow up, it's nothing surprising. Yeah? The same thing, this world is more challenging time, and then more you practice is very powerful. <laughs>